So this is my side yard. My awesome lawnmower. Love my lawnmower. Little pause there. Um, this is going in the back today. Bicolored iris. And uh, these two are big red sage. Or um, salvia, what is it? Rojo pistimin or something. Big red sage. There you go. Now it's in focus. And um, it's not deer resistant. Minimal deer resistant. And you know deer are in my yard all the time. So I can't put it in the front. I'm not going to give them a snack. So I'm going to put it in the back. Uh, and I'll have two big red sages in the back and a bicolored iris. That's where we're going to start it off. These flats are planted because I'm going to start some uh, milkweed for butterflies. And I'm going to start some sunflowers. Uh, you can see we've already got some sages trying to grow here. I left the back row there for, uh, I don't know, I'll put three of some other kind of cutting. I've got a couple of, couple of salvia cuttings here I'm trying to do. I don't know what I have done, but I've managed to kill silver ponies, but I think you have to pour something on it to kill this thing, but I have managed to kill it, so whatever. And, um, these are more of the oregano's that uh, uh, I broke off when I was trying to move it, and so I just uh, rooted them, and you can see they're growing great. I'll uh, give, th give these away or have my kids sell them. Here's a Mexican bush sage. It just got a couple leaves. It's hanging in there, and uh, it's a start. Um, these guys are going to have to go. This is lettuce and whatever. These are chives. I'm going to put these, again, uh, where the deer don't want them or where the deer like to be. I'm going to put those. This is something I grew from a cutting right here. It's getting big. So this is the side yard in April. Check that out. Um, lots of onions. These are green onions, the ones that are bulbing out here with the see the bee on it. Those are green onions. And then right here, you can see there's a little plant right there. That's potato separating the green onions on the back row and the garlic on the back row. So, check out this garlic out. Look how thick those stalks are. I'm super excited to pull out this garlic, May-ish. Um, these are bulb onions. You can see they're starting to bulb on the surface. Look at those two right there. I'm gonna get out of the way so you can see. Look at those two right there, starting to bulb. That looks super nice. So I got a few bulbs coming up here. Nice big onions. I lost some over here due to slugs. And I came out here one night and killed about a grand, killed about a thousand of them. Just mashed them up, didn't even make progress. So I got some sluggo, took care of the rest. See, the deer don't come over here, and deer like potatoes. So I planted, I hid potatoes. That's a potato. There's a potato right there, I can't really see. It's really hard for me to see in the glare and everything. There's potato in the back there with the broad leaves. These are kales. Obviously, these are massive. Look how big that kale is. You can see all the kale I've cut off. I mean, that's kale I've harvested all year. This plant was like $1.99. Um, there's another potato right there. And uh, these are doing really, really super well. Um, there's a chili piquin. This is a really, really hot pepper. So I'm going to let it grow and hopefully cross pollinate with my uh, with my other peppers. This is a pineapple guava, one of my favorite flowers. I'm gonna break it off because I don't think you'll be able to see it in the shade here. It's just starting to bloom. Check this out. It's a tropical, obviously, pineapple guava. But uh, look at that flower, isn't that, is that beautiful? It's pretty awesome. Uh, let's see if we can find some more. It's just coming into bloom. If you can see that one, a couple in there. They're just coming into bloom. They're coming into bloom in there because I sheared them. These ones obviously took a little bit more time to grow. I sheared them, so it's coming into bloom in there first. Let's see if we can find any over here where I didn't shear it. Nah, not really. Oh, yeah, well, there's some back here. Yeah, this looks really pretty. Check that out. That's been awesome. Pineapple guava. Apparently this produces fruit. I've never gotten any, so. I started composting the leaves here and just throwing some extra stuff in there and uh, feeding this plant and I don't know, apparently it grows fruit. We'll, we'll find out. Super duper proud about this. I've gotten a lot of comments on this. So let's check it out. I wanted this to look impressive, followed up with a butterfly garden. So you can see at the very end the lantana is going to attract all the butterflies. Lantana's down there. Um, I love this autumn sage here, the pink autumn sage with the Texas sage. Um, it's really awesome, or uh, you know, salvia grega, whatever you want to call it. 
This is a different kind of salvia gregei. It's a red one and it's got different kinds of leaves. And so as you can see, these little bitty leaves contrasted with these big, bigger leaves in red are gonna look awesome. Now this is something I truly wasn't expecting. I had heard that these were bee magnets and I needed some red. So that's the reason I put this here. Check this out. It looks like the whole beehive has moved in to my, to my Australian bottle brush. This is amazing. They're everywhere. I mean, how can my plants not get pollinated? Um, you can see the blue bonnets here are, are contrasting very well with the red. Just look at all the bees, man. It's just crazy. And you can see all the buds on there. This thing is blooming hardcore and it's not even done. This one here is just about to start. I've been waiting on this one to bloom all year. This is the one that's been giving me problems and hasn't really been doing what I wanted. Oh, sorry, Mr. B, I wasn't, I wasn't for you. Those bees didn't really like it when I flipped their food. Um, so you can see more blooms over here, but this looks pretty impressive. I like it anyway. Um, here we've got purple cone flowers and um, we've got a special guest here as well. To be really careful with. Ooh, I didn't realize this was here. Pull that bad boy up right now. Sensitive briar. So this is that stuff that um, moves when you touch it. That's what this whole area is for. This whole area I've left open because I'm going to allow the sensitive briar to grow. See it here? I don't really know how to do it though because it grows so low. I would have to pull out every single little bit of this stuff and I can't leave bare ground here and this stuff is, is dead in the winter. So I'm gonna have to find out something to replace it. For now, what looks really nice is that this is going to be here when the wildflowers come. Ooh, look at the salamander. Look at the salamander. He's hauling. He thinks I'm going to eat him. He's probably right. Probably should eat him, huh? Um, so yeah, purple coneflower. There's going to be more growing up back here. These popped up really fast and really early. Again, the wet year. These are not purple coneflowers. Pulling these out. This is might be another one right here. One of the first ones to start. Um... But ultimately, we've only had two pop up from the seeds. This is something else. Um, you remember last year, these, all these lantanas were from different parts of the yard. So I wanted to plant them together for effect. And it worked. Um, this one didn't come back. That's fine. As a matter of fact, if he hasn't come back by now, I should pull him up and put another one there. If he hasn't come back, the roots look fine. But he just didn't come back yet. Um, he even kind of feels like he's still alive. Look, there's green there. Oh, well, he's dead now. Um, this uh, this is just starting. I mean, this, this is April. This isn't even supposed to be blooming yet. And so the fact that this is blooming now means it's going to give me about six months worth. Um, so it's going to look really nice. And you can see it on the way out. This is what I really wanted. As my neighbors are leaving every day, how can you not notice that contrast? The yellow, the red, the blue, the pink. And you know what you didn't notice? Didn't notice this garden back here, huh? The garden right there, no one even notices. It's just kind of overshadowed by all this color, which is exactly what I wanted. This is a red Esperanza. I'm gonna plant um, mealy sage right here around it. So the mealy sage is gonna be blue and it's gonna contrast with this and, uh, and uh, the Esperanza over here. This is a red Esperanza though. They just invented it, check that out. So instead of the yellow bells, these are red. Remember red's for hummingbirds. And this will be a hummingbird plant. So this will bring the hummingbirds into my garden for sure. I planted it out here right out in the open so that it'll get massive and the hummingbirds will see it. Anyway, their blue um, sage is gonna go right here or a mealy sage and um, Here's more of the uh, red salvia and the, um, what am I trying to call it? The um, mountain laurels are there. So the next uh, flower bed, my next project, you can see these rocks. Those rocks were here because they were marking a flower bed. I'm gonna have a circular flower bed. The flower bed is gonna go like this. It's gonna go like this. And it's gonna have berm, a berm up top here and a berm up top here to slow the water down so that it doesn't accelerate the water through this tube. 
and in the middle is going to be open. So if you can imagine, the flower bed's going to look like, well, it's not going to go up that high. It's going to look like this, and then it's going to come over here, so it's going to look like this. The middle is going to be open. So I'll have two to three feet of garden over here, two to three feet up here, and two to three feet over here. So this will give me a nice long bed in sun. You can see it's in shade right now, but it's soon to be out because uh, we're going west. Um, and it gets morning sun. That's the awesome part. This little area right here, I don't know why, but it somehow gets morning sun. Like early morning sun peeks through here. So um, this is a great area for a garden. And uh, that's going to be my final bed. I'll irrigate it by you know, running up here and running over here. So the last thing I did, the last thing on the side yard, here's my, yeah. Here's what I got going on in my bed, the edibles. You can, oh no. You can see over here that uh, the pepper has been chomped on a little bit. I haven't found this pepper yet though. So this was a little experiment. I bought extra peppers. I put two of them up here to find out if they'd get found. This one has not been found. Pretty interesting. Um, you can see the bees are still all over the broccoli here. Um, I'm leaving these broccoli for the butterflies. All this stuff's gonna, supposed to bring in butterflies. They need somewhere to lay their caterpillars and that's what these are for here uh, lettuce kale onions Ooh, these are bulb onions they're not doing too good maybe I should water them or something yeah it does look kind of dry and uh, this broccoli here I'm just gonna let it go to seed I'm waiting for the seeds to mature so that I can uh, keep these seeds so that's the only reason it looks ugly and it's still laying over um, yeah I got a really nice lettuce here look how it's grown nice and big and um, some really nice green onions. These green onions, as you'll notice, are all over the garden. Um, I'm going to leave these two right here. I'm going to pull those up. I'm going to leave these two right here. They're going to anchor the front so that the deer just kind of leave it alone again. Um, <clears throat> so let's explain this. I know you probably looked at this like, Steve, come on, what the hell is that? Well, okay. So this is all the pine needles that I had. You can see the weed control. All I did was cover it with cardboard cover with some pine needles and that will give me weed control for until I can get more pine needles here um, I will need to put more pine needles here because uh, this uh, cardboard is going to decompose and you know there's only a few inches of, or maybe an inch of pine needles there which is not going to work <clears throat> to prevent weeds so uh, that's what I'm going to do here too is uh, put some over here and eventually I don't know when I gotta get. I gotta do something about this purple heart. I mean, I knew it was gonna get out of control, and it has. It shouldn't be too hard to pull up, though. I doubt it's. I mean, it doesn't root very easy, so I gotta do something. I don't know what this guy is, but I let him live. I like the blue flowers he had, and so it's a really light grass. You can see that here. I'll pull out one of the stalks. I don't know what that is. I really like it though. Isn't that a cool flower? Yeah, so I let him live and I might uh, pull him up and put some more of him in. That's what I got going on so far. Plans upcoming. I'm going to do some butterflies over here. Some butterflies. This is a magnet for them. This is what they love, lantana. So that's why I put it right here out in the front, right out in the open. Bees. So. The blue is going to go over there. We're going to have some more yellows over here. This is going to be Coreopsis. We're going to put a lance leaf Coreopsis right here. Possibly some Demantia up here. Um, I want some yellows. Obviously, I need a yellow to contrast with this. Red, yellow, blue, right? That's a no-brainer. But I also want some whites, too. So I'm thinking about putting some Blackfoot Daisy up here closer to the curb. Um, the Blackfoot Daisy has to be extremely well drained and so this if I put it up here It would allow me to put a berm up like a four inch six inch berm of um, Granite sand and compost. So if I put a berm right here, you know like this the water's going this way And I could put half of it or three-quarters or whatever I wanted in the shape of Blackfoot Daisy and See this is the other problem I'm having I really want to promote this. This is the sensitive briar again but it's so small that I can't see it. So, I guess this summer I'm just gonna have to make an effort to come out here and pick all this. And, uh, I don't know, do what we can. That's the side garden.